In this video, we are going to build up our 3D product configurator with Angular 3 and Tailwind CSS. Our users will be able to get a preview of a coffee mug and change its color before ordering, for example, from an e-commerce store. Hey everyone, I'm Zoyab Khan and I'm a front-end engineer. A 3D product configurator is a special kind of web app where users visiting an online store can preview their product and can customize it to suit their needs before ordering. Making such a product configurator in Angular was difficult before because there was no wrapper library for 3GS, which is a very popular JavaScript library for 3D visualization. Enter Angular 3, which is created by Chow Tran, who is an open source maintainer and a senior engineer at NRWL Technologies. So by the end of this video, we'll create a very simple product configurator and let's get started. First, we're going to create a new project and we've already created a new project here. Then we will add angular3 by ng add angular3 slash core. Next, we also want to add our helper packages for angular3 called angular3 soba, from which we'll get our orbit controls. Okay, next we're going to import the modules that we need. So we're going to go in app.module and we're going to copy in some of the modules that we need imported here. So we're going to add these here. Next, uh, the first thing that we are going to do then is to create a new component. So we're going to do ng c and we're going to put in a new folder called components and we're going to call it product preview. This component is going to contain the 3D preview of our coffee mug. Great, we have our new component. So the first thing that we need to do in our new component is to add our ngt canvas. Now ngt canvas is a component that actually contains all of our 3D scene and this needs to be here for build any 3D scene in uh, Angular 3. Now we want our 3D scene to have a, ba a white background. So we're going to give some scene options in the input and there's an option called background. We'll specify white as the background, but we'll also cast it or rather uh, convert it to a 3JS color using the color pipe. Okay. Um, next, what we will need to do is to actually load our uh, coffee cup model. Now we can actually create it ourselves as well in a 3D application. But if you don't know much 3D, we can uh, get a ready-made model from any of the collections available on the web. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our 3D model from Sketchfab, which is one such 3D collection. And here I have it opened here. Um, this is the model that we're going to use. It's a basic coffee cup model and it has all of the materials and the colors included in it. Okay. So uh, from here, what we're going to do is we are going to just click on download 3d model and it's a free one so we can get it uh, here it outputs in a gltf format which is great uh, but when we downloaded it from here we then converted it into a glb format as well which actually packages everything in one file then when we get that glb file we actually copy it in our assets folder here Okay, so cup.glb is our model here. So to load this, what we uh, need to do is we'll first go into our, and we're going to include the ngt gltf loader service. So the service is gltf loader service. Okay, and then we're going to um, create an observable uh, of our cup, and we're going to use our ngtf loader service dot load. And we're going to give our assets folder as a path, okay, assets slash cup dot glb. Okay, now in uh, Angular 3, uh, what we do uh, is we use an ngt primitive. So ngt primitive is one of the components that's provided to render an existing object uh, on the screen. So, and here what we're going to do is we're going to put an ngf on our cup observable use the async pipe and give an alias of cup and inside of it or rather uh, in the inputs for the component there is an object property and we have to specify the cup and its scene inside of it to render it correctly okay so we have our basic model now loaded hopefully and uh, let's test this out a bit to see how it looks so we're going to go in our app.component dot html and we're going to just 
give our component that we made here okay we are going to test it out so we're going to do okay so we can't see anything uh, that's probably because we don't have any height set so what we're going to do is we're going to set some height here using tailwind or rather we should make it into a height so one also a tweak that we need to do is to actually go in our product here and in our styles file we need to add a display block so that it displays properly okay great so we can see something here now but uh, as you can see it's black and i think it's a very different angle and we can't really see if it's a cup or not so the first thing that we need to do is that we need to add some lights to the scene any 3d scene is nothing without lights so we are going to add an ambient light here it would be called ngt ambient light and we're going to give it an intensity of 0.5 okay now when we test this out okay we can see that it has some color now to it uh, but the problem is that it doesn't have any shading because an, an ambient light is a very base light and it doesn't uh, provide any shadows or any shading so uh, we need to add a couple of more lights and i have a couple of uh, lights here with me uh, they are point lights i'm going to add about three of them here I'm going to copy them in. They are now put in at different positions and they have an intensity of 0.5. Okay. So let's see how this looks. Okay. This looks a bit better. Now it looks more like a 3D object. To actually move our um, model around here and there, we need to add some uh, orbit controls. Now orbit controls are basically helpers and they're have, they have provided in the SOBA package that we installed as well. So uh, we're going to add here right after the primitive, we're going to add an NGT SOBA orbit controls component. Okay. And uh, that's just about it. When we add it and we test it, we'll be able to rotate and we'll be able to zoom in and zoom out the model. So yes, our model looks pretty good here, uh, but obviously we need it to be better in terms of the default zoom because default it's really small. So um, what we're going to do here is we're going to use the ready event handler that is um, available with the NGT SOBA orbit controls and we're going to do some set initial event handler. We're going to pass in our orbit controls here. Okay. And here we're going to add our event handler called set initial and this would be our um, controls and ngt soba orbit controls okay the first thing what we'll do is we're going to get the orbit controls themselves which would be controls and controls and these uh, orbit controls have a camera basically associated with them so we're going to have orbit control dot object which is actually the camera and we're going to since this is a perspective camera we're going to cast it as such and the first thing we'll do is we'll adjust the zoom of this camera and make it 4.5 right okay we need to do a bit of tweak here and we need to go in our html and we need to declare template variable and export it as ngt so by orbit controls and we can just pass this in our this instead of the event and so now we'll get the ngt soba orbit controls here okay now let's test this out again great so now we can see that okay it's being zoomed fine uh, obviously we also want to change its viewpoint a bit so that we need to center it a bit so for that we are going to change our position and we're going to set the y as 4 okay and we are also going to target of the orbit controls as position of the object but slightly higher so we're going to make it 0.5 okay and we're going to test it out how it looks now okay now yes now this looks really great and it's centered in the uh, it's centered in the middle of the viewport okay so uh, this looks great now the next thing that we need to do is to change the material of the coffee mug here. Now this scene is made up of different objects and we'd like to inspect more closely. So to inspect this more closely, what we do is we add a ready event handler to our NGT primitive component and we're going to call this cup ready. Okay. And we're going to call, uh, 
pass in the event which is going to pass in our object 3d and here we're going to do cup ready okay and we are going to pass in our object which is an object 3d okay and we just want to see what we get exactly so that we can inspect it more closely okay so now if we look in our developer console we're going to see this group object now this group uh, if we drill down and we look at, uh, at it more closely we'll see that it has a child of object and it also has a child of object then this also has a child of object and if we go down deep enough we're going to see two children two meshes now a mesh in a 3d is basically the uh, your basic model structure and it has a material attached to it so we're going to look at the material for this mesh for example and when we look at the material we're going to see that okay it has mesh standard material and for the color we can see that it has zero zero a slight red so this is actually the color of the cup right here so in a sense what we need to do is to change the color of this material here uh, so to do that, uh, what we're going to do is to just note this object underscore two as the ID or the name of this mesh and we're going to get this object. Uh, to do that, what we uh, use is a function called get object by name. So we're going to um, declare, for example, uh, our mesh here. We're going to do object dot get object by name okay and we're going to give the same object underscore two so this is going to give us our mesh object um, but what we want is we we want a material within this mesh so what we're going to do is we're going to cast it into a mesh we're going to get its material so we got this material and we're going to cast that into a mesh standard material great so this is actually the material that we want to save in our component so that we can change its color later so we're going to declare a variable here called cup material which would be a mesh standard material or it could be undefined initially when we don't have the model ready so what we're going to do here is we're just going to save the cup material and assign it to the mesh standard material now just to check this out whether this works and we have got the right material let's try changing the color for this material so we're going to go in color we're going to set a hex value for this color and we're going to use just a sample color that we have got here uh, okay so this gives an issue uh, what we can do here is that we can just okay we can just give it parse int and we can write 16 here okay and this we can give as string okay so yes as you can see the color has changed and it was a purple color here so so this works and we have uh, managed to update the color through the code now so now since we want to allow the configuration of the cup model with the color only uh, let's add an input to this component called color and we're going to add an input here um we're going to call it color we're going to have a setter here but before that let's also add a function here which called apply color to material this is going to take our string color in hex form and it's going to first check whether we have the material available or not rather in other words whether the model has loaded or not and then we're going to just do the same thing that we did up dot color dot set hex here obviously uh, we'll get it in a form of a hash or a hex code so we're going to parse int and we're going to um, first also get, uh, use a substring of this string and we're going to cut off the first letter and then we're going to do the same thing that we did above okay so this function uh, should work now and um, uh, let's remove this for now and in our setter here so we're going to set color here uh, the value would be in a string form 
and we're going to this dot apply color to material and we're going to give the value okay we are also going to uh, keep a hash or, or rather a local variable here and we're going to save this value to the local variable as well we do that because we also want to apply the correct uh, color that was in the input um, when the cup is ready as an initial value to it so this dot apply color to material this dot hash color okay so this should work now but of course we don't have any color set here so i think it's uh, sending a very initial color here so what we're going to do is we're going to test this out by sending a color here and let's send that same color that we set here so this should be purple great so this works really great okay so one last thing that we need to do is uh, to give the model a pop is basically to change some things here orbit controls dot um, enable zoom we need to keep false because we don't want to allow the user to change the zoom and as it, as it could make the model appear really weird but we are going to allow rotation as we did before okay the second thing to give it a bit of a pop is to enable auto rotate okay and let's see how that looks okay as the rotate looks good but it's a bit too slow so i'd like to change the uh, the speed of the auto rotate and maybe make it 10 yes that's more like it okay this looks pretty good now and obviously we can make it as good as we want we can make it even better we can make it more realistic but this is going to do for now for the purposes of this tutorial okay so finally we are done with the difficult part of this tutorial and we can see our model in action as you saw here. and we can send in a color to its inputs as well now the thing that is left is to set up the rest of the ui and to allow the color to be changed dynamically so uh, we are going to add uh, the basic layout of the app here so here is a code that i have already made a bit so as you can see we have a title and we have some text and we have a color options here but we don't have any colors here we are going to add that right now and uh, we have an add to cart button so it's a lot like an e-commerce store so uh, so let's first go to our app.component.ts and we're going to define our colors so colors is basically a string array okay so we have here a set of colors that i have already uh, written here and we need to just copy it here so they're just random colors uh, which can look good with a mug and then we'll also create a selected color variable the initial value would be this dot colors the first value okay just to give it a default color now let's go to our template and let's create our color selector so first we are going to create a new div make it flex give it a gap of four okay then we're going to create buttons inside of it and the buttons would correspond to the colors so we are going to create an ng for loop color of colors let's give it some initial style so let's give it some width and a height of eight okay so yes we can see that some things have changed but to give it a uh, color uh, we are going to give it a dynamic color co uh, using the background and we are going to assign it to color okay this should give us uh, those colors that we need great uh, we will also uh, add some margin top here so margin top four so that we can have some spacing okay let's also make these colors uh, color buttons a bit rounded so we're going to make it rounded full uh, we're going to give it an excel shadow okay and also we are going to give it a border of two and this would be white great now um, also to just give it a bit of style we are going to give a hover and we'll make the opacity as 50, uh, 50 or uh, half of it so so if you can see now we can get that effect okay and the next thing that we need to do is to just uh, on its click event handler we're going to set the selected color to our current color 
okay one last thing that we need to do is to uh, create a style here called selected and uh, with the border color as black okay and then we're going to assign it to our button if so it would be selected if our selected color is equals to our color okay so let's test this out so as we see that the when the first color is selected okay okay we can't see that color in our cup because we need to pass in that as the input so here we are going to pass in the color as the selected color great so let's test this out fully uh, if you click on blue we get this and we get we can see the changes here and we can rotate it around and we can take a good look at our cup before ordering we can give in any of the colors okay so which color do you like okay so i'm just kidding here <laughs> so i hope you found this tutorial useful and uh, learn one way of creating uh, 3d experiences in angular with angular 3 and 3.js so if you did be sure to subscribe to my channel for more such videos thanks for watching